Next up, we're going to go over a few equipment recommendations for video recordings. Ultimately, most phone and computer webcams are pretty good. A lot of phones, the video cameras inside of them, exceed the qualities of webcams and a lot of cheaper video cameras. Yeah. So just because you find some external video camera, it might not be better than what you already have inside of your smartphone. Yes, um, and we do, there are um, different cameras that you can buy. We really don't recommend spending too much on these cameras because your phones can shoot really, really nice um, things and you, and you already have it here and it's in your pocket. So mm -hmm. you might as well use it. If you are looking to get started with the camera, the Canon DSLR, that's basically a word, digital single lens reflex. It refers to these photo type cameras, which can also record video. Mm -hmm. We actually use a number of these cameras for our live concerts as well as live streams. These cameras often have very good image quality because you can swap out the lenses. The EOS Rebel series by Canon makes some good products. But again, unless you have a lot of money to spend with video, the product quality isn't going to differ that much between what you can do on your phone versus a DSLR. Yep. Something you should really watch out for, though, is if you're going to uh, purchase a camera for a live concert recording, most of these DSLRs, cameras like this, they can record up to about not 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Because of tax laws in Europe versus the United States, these cameras are taxed even higher if they can record longer than 30 minutes. So while a camera like this might be really good, for a recording session where each take is only going to be less than 30 minutes. In order to, re to record continuously for longer than 30 minutes, you'll either need to look into getting a camcorder, a video camera that um, is not a DSLR, what you'd expect to see with a camera such as this guy right here. These guys can always record longer than 30 minutes continuously. Or look into the Panasonic GH4, that's a model of camera that actually just paid the taxes and you can record longer than 30 minutes continuously. That's something to watch out for with a lot of these DSLRs at 30 minute limit. Um, the next thing that we wanna talk about is kind of where to put the camera. I feel like these are sometimes things that you're really not thinking about until the last second, um, but it's good to think about this in advance just because kind of what you see is what you get. And if mm -hmm. there are things hanging out in the background, if it's from a low angle, if it's from a really high angle, if there's something in the way so that we cannot see your fingers or your mouth, um, then why, why film it if you, um, mm -hmm. if you can't see it? Exactly. Again, this always comes back to doing test recordings. Oh, you know what? I do see uh, mm -hmm. something um, in the chat yeah so a question um from someone in the chat is why does my cheap 4k camera have such bad quality it says 4k that's a great question 4k is in some ways a marketing technique and <laughs> so uh, what it is is it refers to the resolution the number of pixels and width and height of your video so different dimensions of video the number of pixels you have that's the resolution and that basically determines in many ways, the quality. However, it's not that simple. Something that says it has 4K, it just means that it's going to have uh, more pixels than 1080p. We have 720, the smallest, 1080p, a little bit bigger. 4K is twice the width and twice the height as 1080p. Mm -hmm. However, that only tells you the number of pixels that are being recorded in the video. It doesn't tell you anything about the other factors, which are even more important such as the lens on the camera, the actual glass in whatever camera, there is some glass here that the light passes through and then it bends and then it hits the sensor inside of there. Very cheap lenses simply will look blurry and it doesn't matter whether you're recording in 720p, 1080p or 4K. Mm. Once the light has gone through that lens, it's just not a very sharp lens. That's one issue. The other issue is just how it's storing data. A lot of cameras record in a very compressed data format, which simply can't contain the amount of resolution that you would get if you had a higher bit rate, if you were recording more information. And um, the other thing, just 
to mention as well is that um, most of the time when we're watching something back on a laptop or on your phone, um, some, if not all of those devices don't have the resolution to really watch 4K. So sometimes you might think you're watching something back in 4K, but you're really um, watching it back in 2K just, or, you know, or 1080, mm -hmm. yes, just be because you can't watch it back on that, um, um, on that d d device. So mm -hmm. a thing that we normally do is we film in 4K and then we render down to, um, to um, a lower resolution. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Going back to video placement yes. and talking about uh, <laughs> different things, as we've mentioned, doing test recordings, that should be able to fix lots of the different um, problems you might have, such as if there's a music stand in the way of the instrument, make sure you plan for that. Also make sure that whatever specific requirements of your instrument are taken care of. For example, for pianists, most of the time we'll want to be able to see the actual feet of the pianist. So you want to make sure your video camera is far enough back. Similarly, if there's any sort of part of technique that you need to make sure is inside of the video frame, make sure you think about that and include that in advance while you're doing test recordings. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've sort of gone through a, a couple uh, of these, just sort of, you know, thinking about what is the, the best spot where I can see all the things that I need to see. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's sort of it. Absolutely. Next up, we have a number of general guidelines and tips for test recordings. So just like audio and video, just like audio, I should say, you always want to do test recordings in advance. And one of the things to mention is that even when we do professional recording sessions where clients come to us in Los Angeles and we bring all the equipment, a lot of the artists still do test recordings in advance, even if it's on their own personal equipment. That way they're used to the mindset of being inside of a recording. Mm. There's a lot that goes into the actual thought behind you're doing a performance, but you can restart it. And so you have to think about stamina. You have to think about pacing. There are a number of things that are different from creating a recording than a live concert that are important to take into consideration. Yeah, and so hopping right into it, the first two I would say are when you're using a phone. Um, these are, it's a generally good idea to um, avoid like zooming in um, as well as using the, um, the selfie cam feature uh, of a phone. Um, if you can't see something or if you're not sure, um, if you can see it, I would say do a test, find out, and then move back or move in. We really don't want to be um, zooming in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As Tyler mentioned, of the two cameras, the one that's facing outward is usually higher resolution than the selfie cam. And generally, landscape is going to be better than portrait. So that's something else to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, sync. Let's see. Always mm -hmm. more from your current device. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if you are recording something separately, um, then it is a solid idea to still re, um, to still have sound rolling on both, um, devices so that you can use that to sync things up, um, later. Absolutely. A lot of video cameras come with built-in microphones. And even though those built-in microphones aren't very high quality, we always leave those running. That way you can still hear what was going on. Mm -hmm. The attire and positioning of the recording space definitely matter. This is something that's probably a very large struggle recording from home. However, there's a lot to being said for making sure that you demonstrate in your attire, positioning, that you have the professional attitude that would be expected if we were just in a live concert versus in a home recording setup. Yes, and it's a thing to think about if knowing that somebody is going to be watching this and if you are set up next to a window where there's stuff going on in the background or if you have a super messy desk, 
like we have here, maybe not the best spot to film just because there are things in the background that somebody may start to, to focus on and not focus on how you sound or sort of how you look, you know? Absolutely. Touching on the next one, avoid being backlit. Backlighting is whenever there's a strong lighting source from behind. Although it can look gorgeous in some situations, most of the time, and especially with home audio equipment, webcams, cell phone mics, because they use automatic exposure, it tries to make everything look good. Having a strong backlight throws off the algorithms, basically what your phone is trying to do to make it look, the brightness look good. You really want to avoid being backlit. Um, and then lastly, like we mentioned for um, the segment for this, it's good to leave about two to five seconds of sort of, um, of calmness um, at the beginning and especially at the very last um, moment. So last sound and you finish and then you relax so that later you can do a, um, a nice fade out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely.